Hey, the mouth of the sound, Jimmy Hart. Hey, check out my new tag team, baby, Money in the Foul. Hey, Jimmy, don't forget to tell them about Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Well, you know what I would, but you already did it. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh Show. Monty and Pharaoh, bro. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh Show. And you're watching the Monty and Pharaoh Show. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. And Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, is it Monty and the Pharaoh? Yeah. Monty and Pharaoh. Dad. The Monty and the Pharaoh show. The Monty and the Pharaoh. To so the Monty and the Pharaoh show. And it's Monty and the Pharaoh, baby. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, what a run. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey, cut the fucking music. When you want the best in professional wrestling, Long Island, there's only one place you're going to get it. Right here, Monty and the Pharaoh. <laughs> now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best. That, my friends, is just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Monty and the Pharaoh. You've got the future Hall of Famer, that rocker, Marty Gennetti, and MJ in the house, and I'm sitting here with two more future Hall of Famers, Monty and the Pharaoh. We're doing that stuff and we're going to rock it. Straight, straight, straight to the top. We're living this life, not just dreaming it, we're doing it for real. Straight, straight, straight to the top. Working hard every day just to live out that tower. Alright, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast out of our new home, Indie Music TV, here at a straight out of Ronkonkoma, Long Island. You know when you write a script and then you put the wrong word in place? Nice. That's when you stutter over your words, Oops. right? I know we've been off for a few months. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to familiar familiarize the audience with familiarize. the star Fancy schmancy. of oh, the show. Oh, to oh. my right, Mr. Yeah, Jimmy right. Farrow. Jimmy, how are you, my friend? It says here to the left. What? I change it on mine, pal. Oh, man. Talk about on the fly. You Don't rock. abuse me, please. Oh, no. You? It's already no. been a rough night. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, what are you going to do? How you been, pal? I haven't seen you in a long Good, time. Good, man. Wait, waiting for this insanity just like everybody else to blow over. It's been Groundhog Day every day for what seems like an eternity. Get up. Go to work. Come home. At least we can. Eat dinner. At least we yeah, can. Thank go to God. Work. Thank right? you, God. Thank yeah, God. At least we can go to work. I but, totally uh, agree with you. You know, we're both friend. in the epicenter of it, and as you know, our family, some of our family members are in the epicenter of this thing. And uh, for those of those those folks out there who are laughing and you know thinks it's a, think it's a joke, it, it's it's not a joke. I mean, I've got three pairs of masks in my jacket. Me, God, That's, God. If I'm doing it. Come on, guys. God Be safe. bless all the people out there, and uh, absolutely. God bless. Um, God bless us all, everyone. God bless us all, everyone. Oh, okay, Tiny Tim. Okay, Sweet. Tiny Tim. That's there, really good. There you go. Well, I'd like to thank the sure band that themes, sings the theme song for Monty <laughs> the Faro Aqua Cherry, our theme song, Straight to the Top. You yeah. can also catch their songs, Yes, Yes, Forever, and Seasons. Aqua Cherry's music can be found on Spotify, really? iTunes, huh. Reverb Nation, huh. or mu where music is sold. Wherever. Holy crap. Wherever I music is sold. Yeah. And our outro is sung by none other than our own Jimmy Farrow and his oh. partner Bart Griggs yeah. from the band. And Wisteria Hall. Yeah. Wisteria Hall sings such great songs as In My Dreams, This Life, which I love, yes. Not Far Behind, which yes. I love. Thank you. And they could also be bought and seen on Spotify, yeah. iTunes, and Reverb Nation. Yeah. And if you're interested, Monty Nefaro can be seen on YouTube. All over the place. IndieMusicTV.com, yeah. Facebook Live, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, and Channel 115 every Tuesday from 8.30 to 9 p.m. And for the early risers on Saturday, 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. Our super producer, Luke, in the studio. Luke, how are you? Over there. Uh, living life, my friends. Living Did you life. know we were on so many channels and were on cable TV? Did you even have that clue? 
I did not know you guys made it to cable TV. That's how you know you really made it. Oh. Do you know that you're going to be on cable TV now? Uh, I am just got so much more excited to be look, here. Look who just really wow. made it. There you go. <laughs> really awesome. excited. You know, we won't be able to go to the tobacco store. They'll be asking us to sign their shoes. <laughs> hey, anyway. Jimmy, yeah, let's get what? to wrestling. Okay, fine. Did you catch Dark so Side of the Ring? UWF, our okay. own Sunny Beach, right. was on this Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, and the audience at home knows that they've been fans of the show for the last two-plus years. Uh, this is more your speed than mine, these these documentaries that pull all the dirt out and everything like that. I purposely did not watch this because I want the fresh reaction that we'll get from tonight's esteemed guest. So I want to know his take, and then I'll probably go and check all of this out. Well, tonight's esteemed guest is none other than Chris Benoit, uh, Chris Benoit's wife, Nancy Benoit's first husband, husband Mr. Jim Doss. There we go. Uh, we'll get to Jim right after this commercial break. Stay tuned. All right, I want to thank our sponsors. Without them, Jimmy, uh, the show couldn't go on. Uh, yep. They take care of us. They help us out. They do. And, uh, you know, but let's end, let's uh, welcome our star of the show, Mr. Jim Doss. Jim, how are you, buddy? Hey, buddy. Doing pretty well. How are you all doing? Uh, thank, you thank you for you hanging, hanging in there. there. We, yeah, had, we some had some internet, internet technical, technical problems. problems. You've been, been a trooper. A trooper. Uh, I'm going uh, to turn, gonna you, turn you over to the Pharaoh, Pharaoh, my friend. friend. How you doing, you doing Jim? Jim? Thanks, Thanks for, being for being on the show with us tonight. tonight. I, gotta I gotta ask you, you right, right off the bat, bat. Jim, if Jim, you don't, if you don't mind, can you just turn down your microphone, microphone a little bit? Thank you. Thank you. I wanted, I wanted to ask, to ask you, you uh, I understand that you, you, had, you a had a bit of a scare, of a scare with the, uh, the COVID-19, the coronavirus situation. Uh, can you fill us in on what, what, what happened with that? Yeah, we were in New Orleans with a large group from my company, Tri-State Distributors. We were at the Fireplace and Grill Show in new orleans right about the end it was the second week of march we got back and people started getting sick in our group we had about oh maybe a dozen of us in the group that went to new orleans for the show and one by one everybody was getting positive tests for coronavirus and about six or seven were positive three more of us got sick i got sick Uh, but my test came back negative and um so who knows if i had it or not but most likely did, but it might have had a false negative or something like that. When, 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 it, when, when it's been locked up at the house since uh, since I got back no, uh, on March 15th. So glad to be here. Gives me something to do. There you there go. You go. Uh, uh, when, when you first, you first got, got the news that you could potentially have uh, this uh, virus that's obviously affecting the entire world, what what went through your mind? I mean, obviously, were you scared? Uh, I mean, what goes through one's mind when they find out that they might have this and have to take a test to see if they do? I had a panic attack that, about the second night. I couldn't breathe. I was laying in bed. I couldn't breathe. I had to get up, and it was scary. It really was. Mm. But it ended up uh, maybe I didn't have it. Maybe I did. If I did have it, I did have a minor case. Some of the people that were with us were out and off their feet for two weeks. I was only about five days. Okay. So, Jim, let's let's get to let's get to what uh, point here? Uh, growing up, how did how did you meet Nancy? I missed you there. 
Uh, how did you, uh, growing up, how did you meet Nancy? <laughs> Nancy and I met in high school. Well, actually, my last day of my senior year in high school, I was uh, at the school to pick up or drop off some books on the last day. And she was at the bus loop and with some friends of mine. And I didn't know she lived right around the corner from me. So I ended up giving her a ride home. And we live in a rural part of Florida, so it's about a 45-minute ride home. And we became friends that day, started dating about a week later. Got married about a year later. Wow. wow. Can I ask you? It was her junior year, the last day of her junior year. Your, your, your first, first impression, impression, the first impression. time you laid your eyes on her, what goes through your mind? Ah, beautiful woman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. No doubt. Yep. Now, were you a wrestling fan growing up, Jim? I really wasn't. I grew up in New York City. My family moved to Florida. Actually, I lived in Elmont, Long Island. And my family moved to Florida in the late, set, early 70s. And um, started going to wrestling when I was about 17 or 18 at the Eddie Graham Sports Stadium in Ocala. I mean, in Orlando. And a few matches in Ocala at the High Life Fronton. I just won it a handful of times and uh, started getting interested in it. So who, who, did you, who did you idolize growing up as far as a wrestler? Didn't really idolize anybody, but back then it was Dusty Rhodes and Barry Windham and Mike Graham, Steve Kern, Jimmy Garvin. That was the, uh, the good guys at the time in Florida. Can you tell us what kind of person, what type of person Nancy was? There's always rumors when you're a celebrity. I'm just curious to hear directly from the source. What sort of person was she, Jim? She was fun-loving, an amazing person. She was a great wife for four-plus years. Uh, She just liked to enjoy life and have fun. She really didn't want to work that much. (laughs) Was she she shy shy privately? privately? Because she certainly, you know, she was like, <laughs> I guess silent but deadly would be a great way to describe yeah. her on-screen persona. How how was she in behind the scenes? Was she reserved? She was. She was very shy until we had to pull it out of her. After we got married, I had to pull that personality out of her a little bit. Okay. So did you introduce Nancy to wrestling? Uh, how does that come about? How does she get involved in the wrestling world? It's a long story, but we started out, we started going wrestling on Sunday nights. And it was in Orlando at the Eddie Graham Sports Stadium. And we'd call in and reserve our seats. And they never spelt my name correctly. It was always Davis or Doss or something else for the first four or five weeks. It's actually Douse, D-A-U-S. So okay. they never got my tickets correct. So after they messed them up for the fourth or fifth week, they said, you know what? We have three seats available on the front row that you can have every week. If you want, if you want, like season tickets. Okay. Okay. So like, that's, a, that's a great deal. Ten dollars, ten dollars tickets. Front row. So we started going. Me and two of my friends. And at the time, Nancy was only sixteen years old. Her parents wouldn't let her go, so she wasn't going at first. Your, Your uh, love, love of wrestling. wrestling. Measure, Me- measure it for me at the time when you got Nancy involved. I mean, were you like a huge passionate fan, or was this just a a whim? What what gave you the idea to get Nancy to think about this? It was more like a whim. It wasn't really um, that much wrestling. We knew Nancy had some kind of talent. We didn't know what. We didn't know what we were going to do. Um, she didn't want to have an office job or nine to five job or anything like that. Uh, she wanted to do something different. So and that we just fell into that. Fell into wrestling after a while. And what, what, what were, were you doing, doing at, the at the time? Were you, were you just supporting, just supporting her, her and her dream, dream to, to, to fall into wrestling? wrestling? I was a meter reader at a gas company. Contract work at a gas company, reading, reading gas meters that from 17 years old to about 20. Now, 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 was Nancy involved in apartment wrestling too? How does that come about? Yeah, well, that, that came a little bit later. What happened was Bill Otten, who most of these pictures are taken by, Bill Lawton, the wrestling photographer, he was always sitting right across from us shooting the picture at each each match in Orlando. And he took one picture of Terry Funk taking the, my chair out from underneath me in the front row and throwing the chair into the ring. And Nancy was sitting right next to me, of course. So I think you do have a picture of that also, Terry Funk throwing the chair. Yeah, yeah. And that picture... Bill Otten just took it and had Nancy's face in the picture. 
So he sent it to, with his rolls of film, to uh, the Japanese wrestling magazines. And they put it a, a three-page pull-out centerfold. And when he got the magazine back, he brought it over to us. We never met Bill or talked to Bill. And he said, can I talk to you guys for a minute? And he showed us the picture and showed us the magazine. And he said, I just had to show you guys this. It's your chair and your wife's face right there when Terry Funk throwing the chair. So that's how we got to meet Bill. And about two weeks after that, Bill Otten said um, he just bought a bunch of new equipment, some new photo equipment. And he's never done anything but wrestling, really shooting. So he wanted to try out his new photo equipment on a, uh, on a model or some girl or something like that. And he asked if Nancy would be available. He said, if we can use Nancy in these, in these pictures, we'll give you a whole, I'll give you a whole portfolio. All the pictures will be yours. It's really just testing the equipment. So we got to be good friends with Bill Otten, and that's how we got into wrestling. Did you ever, when you were getting Nancy into the business as her, as her husband, as a man, did you ever feel concerned, like, when it was happening, as you're getting into the business, is there a little voice maybe possibly asking yourself, you know, this could get out of control. She's a beautiful woman. They may try to use it for her looks. Yeah. You know, the, the wrestlers are all pretty much, from what we hear, a lot of them were very aggressive towards any woman. They don't care if it's your wife. They don't care if it's, your, it's someone's girlfriend. Did you ever, early on, get flashes in your own head going, you know, this could get crazy. Am I doing the right thing here? No, it really didn't. Everything seemed to be working out well. Nancy and I always got along real well. We had a very good marriage. Everything was good. Um, it was later on that those things popped up. Okay. Okay. Well, you want to elaborate on that, Jim? Or? Uh, well, Nancy was getting more and more popular, and um, her head got a little bit bigger, of course, and she knew that we could actually do this. And we grew apart. We started growing apart. She started doing some shows on the road when I wasn't with them, when I wasn't with the group. She started doing some shows in Texas and Baltimore and places like that without me. And then when she got home one trip, we started talking. I said, Nance, you know, I think, I really think that um, I'm, I am holding you back. Us being married is holding you back. Wow. We're wow. starting to grow apart. And you might want to think about this. And right after we thought about this for about two days, after I picked her up the airport, we talked about it. We decided, let's start, let's separate and see what happens. As soon as we separated, her career just took off like crazy. How hard, How was, hard this was this for you? For you? I mean, you, I made, mean, you, you made, made a very, very mature decision without, it sounds like there wasn't any kind of uh, altercations or friction. How was this for you to do? That's got to be hard. It, it was tough. It was tough. It was the worst year of my life. There's no doubt about mm. that. When I got when we were going through the divorce and everything else, and watching her become famous, that was our dream. Um, the whole gimmick and everything else, the way she dressed and so forth, we put all that together, both of us together. It was tough, right. but right. it was for the best. Did, did, did you have, did a, you have a, a did you have a, did relationship you have a relationship with Kevin Sullivan at all? Yeah, Kevin, Kevin and I were friends. Um, the way this whole thing started is after Bill got this equipment all these photo, the photo equipment. He started taking the photo equipment to the matches on weekends, mostly. The big shows like Lakeland Civic Center, the Orange Bowl in Miami, uh, Bayfront Center, St. Pete. And he'd bring Nancy and I with him to set up all the equipment. So we were working with Bill and helping Bill um, set up all the equipment and shoot the wrestlers, and we were shooting wrestlers. And Billy Jack Haynes came in one day. He was watching us and talking with us, and he wanted to get a couple girls into the shoot and he said Nancy's great let's get Nancy and don't you have a friend or somebody else and Bill had another friend that he brought in um, so a couple weeks later we started shooting um, these pictures with Billy Jack and the two girls and Kevin came in to watch us shoot and um, Kevin became interested in the whole thing and we did some pictures with Kevin then and Kevin and I were pretty close friends uh, all three of us were close friends for a couple of years or year and a half there we were with each other on the road quite a bit and um i don't have any hard feelings for kevin uh, last time i talked to kevin was probably 10 or 11 years ago after the the horrible tragedy uh, i do cover the whole state of florida for tri-state distributors selling high-end fireplaces and barbecue grills 
And um, he had that gym, Froggy's, down in Isle Morata in the Keys. So I stopped by after the uh, tragedy, and we had a long talk. And I probably stopped by once or twice more after that. But I believe then he sold the gym, and he was no longer in the Keys. So I haven't talked to Kevin in probably 10 years. But we never had any, Kevin and I never had any problems or any issues. Just, Just to, to uh, make the make timeline the... clear, so when Kevin and Nancy became involved, you were already separated? True or false? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, so there wasn't any real... So how were you and Kevin over the well, years? Well, 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 she, she said, said they're good, good, but here's my question, Jim, and I'm not trying to start anything. I know you were separated from Nancy, but then you find out that Kevin's with Nancy. Do you feel betrayed at all, or mm. do you feel like your friendship, like he, maybe this was going behind your back? I felt the betrayed at the time, but you know, now I'm 35, 40 years later, um, married to a wonderful person for 31 years. Yeah. My wife yeah. Sue, mm-hmm. And she's amazing. You know, it, it, it worked out great. Everything worked out. That's, a, that's amazing, amazing, right? right? That, that's amazing. It is. It is. Well, well Nancy, Nancy, when, when, I, when I talked to Kevin, about, like I said, 10 or 11 years ago, we had a very good conversation. It was no, no problem, no concern. And I have no hard feelings. And I told him that. As, As Nancy's Nancy star, star was, was rising, rising and, of and of course you were, you were watching watch- from afar at this point, uh, how did you uh, did you guys ever stay in touch while this was going on? I mean, did you stay in contact over the years with Nancy from time to time, or was that even a possibility? Considering you know you were involved in your in the life you've spoke of now with your your wife of thirty one years, I mean, was there any relationship with Nancy as she her star rose? A little bit here and there. The first two years, we did talk off and on what she was doing, how what her career was doing, and so forth. Um, then it was odd. I would run into her in airports all over the place, run into her in Chicago or in Iowa one time. I mean, it was crazy how I'd run into her in airports. And a lot of time we were both flying back to Daytona. That's why I still live in the Daytona area, and that's where she was living. So we, we'd see each other once in a while. We'd talk to each other once in a while, yes. Yeah. So it was we, always good. We, were you ever, we, 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 we ever seated on, 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 on the same plane together, together on the same, same, same seat, seat like, like next, next to each other? Each other? <laughs> Get out of here. What? <laughs> By coincidence? By coincidence? Well, I, was, I was promoting bad man contests on the side. Um, at, right after wrestling, I started working with Baddest Company. and was promoting bad man contests all over the United States. I was working with a part, two partners and doing that. Mm-hmm. So we were traveling around a lot. Also, we were running a dozen shows a year all over the United States. So I was flying a lot. And I fly a lot for my business also with the high-end fireplaces, the high-end barbecue grill. So I was on the road a lot. So one one trip, I was running late from a bad man contest, and it was like the OJ thing running through the airport. Yeah, yeah. Um, got, got to the got to the gate, right before they closed it, and got on the plane, and they said, there's one seat in the back. All right, so I get on the plane, go all the way to the back, and Nancy's sitting right there. Wow. And wow. Was, and what, was, is what is that like? Well, like, is is that like, hey, like, how you doing? Or is it like, hey, like hey, gloop? It was, hey, how you doing? I looked, I looked down. I said, Nancy. She goes, Oh my God, sit down. <laughs> we talked for two and a half hours on the way to on the way to Atlanta, and then we changed planes in Atlanta. Got on the next plane and sat together, in on the plane from Atlanta to Daytona. And then my wife was picking me up from the airport down that trip. So I get off the plane with my ex-wife and my new wife picking us up. It was pretty comical. <laughs> and your new, and your new wife, wife, I'm sure, I'm sure she was happy about that, right? Oh yeah, thrilled. At first, he was like, what the heck is going on? But then Nancy <laughs> put her arms around her and gave her a big hug and said, oh, I've heard so many good things about you and everything else. And I said, Sue, this is my ex-wife, Nancy. And it was, it, was, it, was, it was an experience. I want to go back to your conversation with Sullivan. Um, what does Sullivan say to you? Um, it's been, like I said, that was 10, 11 years ago. He was just telling, you know, we were talking about the whole thing and how horrible it was. We didn't talk about what happened after Nancy, Nancy and I split and, hit, and them two got together. We didn't talk about that. We were okay. just talking about how bad the situation was. Okay. okay. All right. Before, All right, before I get, I get, to, get dark to Dark Side of the, side ring, of the ring, a quick question on Nancy and the Hustler lawsuit. Uh, if anyone that doesn't know, in 2007... Hustler published nude photos of Nancy after her death. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, that was, um, first of all, Nancy Nancy and I never wanted to get into Hustler or any of those magazines or anything like that. There was a shop job in 
um, the Orlando area. It was a, a shock jock radio show on WBIZ. Baxter and Mark. Rick Baxter and Mark Stamansky. Nancy was a lot, like you said, Nancy didn't want to work. So a lot of times we'd go to uh, bikini contests, things like that. Um, Miss JJ Whispers, Miss Hawaiian Tropic of Florida, things like that. And she'd enter them, and a lot of times she win, and that would pay the bill. Uh, it, was, it was really good. So we met these two shock jocks, and I believe it was at the Miss Hawaiian, Florida Miss Hawaiian Tropic contest. And we became friends with Mark Samanti. Now, Nancy was 20, and I was, no, Nancy was 19, and I was 20. And um, we became friends with Mark Samansky and his wife. So we went out to dinner with him a couple of times. And again, we were married. We were young. We were kids. We were stupid. We went to their condo in Orlando one night after dinner and drinking, drank some more. And we went to one room. Mark and his wife went to their room. Of course, we, we did our thing. We spent the night over there. And we had no idea, but Mark Samansky filmed it. And those pictures that went to Hustler was sold by Mark Samansky to Hustler for a thousand dollars before he died. Wow! He sold the video. Wow! Wow! How angry did that's this why, make you? That's why it was in court so many times. Oh my, oh my God. God! This must have been this must have infuriated it you. Like it's like double insulting double... after the tragedy. How on earth did you keep your mental facilities together during this? Well, we didn't know. We didn't. We had no idea. The wow. video appears after Nancy passed away. Right. We had no idea that it even existed. And um, six months later, Bill Otten actually called me. He heard something about it. We found something on the internet. He said, hey, you need to take a look at this. And I knew, I knew that it wasn't good when I saw what was coming out. And um, it just went from there. So it, who knows? 35 years later, it's crazy. Right. Right. How does that affect your business your life, like your life now? Your life now. It really doesn't. Um, Few people know who I am. I don't go out and telling people normally. They usually uh, find out the hard way, and if they do, they it it, it makes me like a little my fifteen minutes fame type thing. Jim, does it, does it frustrate you? It's been said in the past. Let me let me make sure I got this name right. Sandra Tofolini, the sister of Nancy, has gone on record in the past as saying that you know when Nancy and you were divorcing, Nancy and Kevin were deeply in love. The stories popped up over times. Now you did describe that there were no issues. Is there anything to her comments, or is it, you know, that cut and dry the way she tried to make it out, or is this just, you know, BS coming from your end? No, Sandra was young. Sandra, we used to babysit Sandra. Sandra, when Sandra was a little girl, six years old, she'd be with us on weekends and everything else. She didn't know back then mm. what was really. Kevin and Nancy started after we were divorced or after we were separated. That started mm -hmm. later when they were on the road. Um, just Sandra just doesn't remember. I got to ask you while we have you. I just want your thoughts on this because I have to know how you feel emotionally when you hear this kind of crap. The rumors that have gone on for years that Kevin Sullivan was the one behind this. Does this make you sick? Can you can you just give us your thoughts on this sort of rumor? Behind what part? Kevin uh, was rumored, rumored to, be to be behind Nancy's death. You know, after... Nancy now, left. this is not coming from us, obviously. This is something we've read on the Internet that makes me sick every time I read it. So I wonder, what is your response to something like this? There's no way on earth Kevin had anything to do with it. No Thank way. you. Thank no you. Way. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, were, you still, were, were you still were you still talking to Nancy? Were you still talking to Nancy when she was married to Chris? The last time I talked to Nancy, I got an email from her when she was pregnant. And that's when she was 40 years old. That's the last time I've ever heard from Nancy. And because Nancy and I never wanted kids. We weren't going to have kids. Um, I, have a, I have a son. It, things happen, of course. I have a son that's 23 years old and, and going to Florida State University right now for his master's. And Nancy, when she got pregnant, she sent me an email. Guess what? I'm pregnant. And I hadn't talked to her in a couple of years at that point. So I said, well, guess what? I have a son also. Wow. It was a very brief email conversation and I think she was very very happy with Chris because I'd never heard from her again mm. Mm. what were your feelings when you find out about this murder I mean I mean I, I know you're upset but like what goes through your mind it was it was horrible it was really bad it was a 
it was a rough month, actually, because Nancy kept her professional name in Dallas quite a bit. Everybody knew that. So the media wouldn't leave us alone. And, um, gosh, I had to turn my cell phone off, my house phone off, and everything else. The first day, we had 75 phone calls from Time, Life, People, the New York Daily News, everybody, ESPN, you name it. Yeah. Have, you, Have kept you kept in contact, in contact with Nancy's family over the years after this? Not really, just Sandra. I do talk to Sandra occasionally. I talk to Sandra probably at least once a year. Um, her parents, I've only seen them for the court trials and stuff like that. Um, I feel so bad for her family. I, at times, I wish I didn't help Nancy get into wrestling. Who knows where she would be now? She probably wouldn't have been passed away. Um, I do feel bad at times about that, but I feel so bad for her family and everything that they've been through. Your personal <laughs> thoughts on Chris Benoit, please. I know the man. I know bad things happen. I don't know Nancy's life that last seven years when she was with Chris. I don't know how bad of a person he was to her. We do know what he did, and hopefully he burns in hell. I couldn't have said that any better myself. Can't argue with it. No, you can't. You can't. can't. With it. Um, how do you feel about Chris Benoit's son and the pain he's going? Did, did you watch the Dark Side of the Ring episode? Obviously, you did. Oh yeah, I watched it a couple times. Yeah, and so, I'm glad that Sandra and him got back together. That was really good. Um, he's going through the same thing Sandra went through, um, and Sandra's taken is really, really hard. Nancy with Sandra's life, and it's, I feel so bad for Sandra. And her, uh, Chris's son also. Would you say the Dark Side of the Ring episode was accurate? It's, well, the early parts, like you said, Sandra didn't remember a lot um, the first 20 minutes of it. After that, it was really about Chris. And I, I think it was well put together, the Dark Side episode. Um, I think it focused a little too much on Benoit and Guerrero. I don't know if that was really the cause of anything. I think they played that up a little bit too much. That's a great That's point. I, I felt like the piece itself uh, was making excuses for why Benoit did what he did. Exactly. That's how I felt. And uh, I think it was more of the steroids and all that. The brain damage or whatever he could have had. That kind of thing. Look, it's clear you had a really good relationship with Nancy, but I'm going to ask you this question. Other rumors state that Nancy was a pretty aggressive woman and would get physical. Uh, any truth? Any truth to that on your end, what you experienced? Never, not one time. Not one time did we ever lay a hand on each other. She was always sweet, lovable Nancy. Never had an issue like that. I've heard the stories over the years about her being physical, you mentioned, you mentioned you mentioned Billy Jack Haynes earlier, and he's sweet and lovable too. Yes, we love we love Billy Jack here at Money the Pharaoh. But I got to ask you this: How much drug scene did you see in the brief time as you're breaking Nancy? And were you concerned that she ever was she vulnerable to to narcotics? Did you ever wor wonder or worry about how much that could affect her or the business itself? Because Benoit was obviously hooked on roids or whatever it was that scrambled his mind. Other people did massive amounts of coke and all these. Were you concerned about whether or not that could change her as a person? I was, yes. Uh, I was concerned about that. So, yeah, we didn't see a lot of it, but we saw enough, and I was definitely concerned about it. And that was one of the decisions that I wanted to get out of it. Should Nancy, Nancy be in the Hall of Fame someday? Nancy should have been in the Hall of Fame years ago. Nancy you think, you think, first you, you, morning of wrestling. You think, you they'll, think ever they'll ever touch, touch it because, because of what Chris, of what Chris did? did? Vince will ever entertain the thought? It's a must. I think he has to. There are people pushing for it. you got to know. She was, again, when we started this whole thing, when Kevin and the group and the whole Troop of Darkness started this and we had Nancy chained to Kevin and so forth, we were the first people to do that. She was the first woman to do anything like that. And she just went from there to Robin Green to woman, you know, from the fallen angel. She pioneered women in wrestling that we know today. It wouldn't be a Miss Elizabeth, Precious, Sunshine, and all the rest of them without 
what Nancy did. How did you feel she when was she was taking, taking, like, you know, when she went to ECW, for example, and she would actually take a cane shot or something like that? How'd, how'd that make you feel? Only you would do that. <laughs> Nancy was tough. Nancy, she was. She was. Okay. Nancy okay. was tough. Nancy wasn't like a normal girl. Yeah. Did, did, you her her did you witness some of her in-ring? Did you witness some of her in I mean, were you there for a lot of this stuff? Only the early stuff. Very okay. close to early, just the beginning. No, uh, no, no, no cane, cane shots shot for you, huh? You. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Jim. I Jim, think, I think you're, downplaying you're downplaying your knowledge on wrestling. You're calling a lot of a lot of women wrestlers' yeah. names out there, yeah. and you were going deep you too, just man. You spit out the roll call. Yeah, you, yeah, you did. You spit yeah. out the roll. Are you a closet wrestling fan? You still got the anymore. <laughs> I got out of it. I got out of it. There you, there you go. go. So I so gotta, I gotta ask, ask you: Is, you, is, is fame, fame overrated, overrated my friend? Uh, with the unfortunate, you know, things you've witnessed over the years, is is fame overrated, or what, what say you? Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, I believe it is. Some of the stuff that we went through, just my family and I, after Nancy's murder, uh, it was, it was mm. horrible. The mm. paparazzi and everything else. And you got to remember, I was away from Nancy for thirty years at the time, or whatever it was. And I had paparazzi in my driveway. They wouldn't let us out of the house. It was crazy. Wow, that's, that's amazing. amazing. Holy Holy God. God. That's actually insane. Quite honestly, thirty years, thirty years, and all of a sudden the whole world's up his crankshaft. I would have lost my mind. You know, again, you probably can't answer this question, but I've always wondered why Nancy never went into the WWE when Chris moved to the WWE. Do you think she just wanted out of the wrestling scene and just be a mother? Yes, there was no doubt. Nancy didn't, again, Nancy could have had a lot more opportunities and a lot bigger career if she wanted to. She had that much talent. I just don't think she really wanted to work. How do you feel about the never-ending debate from certain wrestling fans that Chris Benoit the wrestler and Chris Benoit the person should be subdivided and only his wrestling should be judged and he belongs in the Hall of Fame. How's that make you feel? That's crazy. That's insane. That Chris Benoit should not be in any Hall of Fame. Plain and simple. I don't know. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, Jim, and then we're going to come back and then uh, do some parting, parting shots and uh, just give us a, a couple seconds here, okay? Stay tuned. All right, we're back with our special guest, Jim Doss, uh, ex-husband of Nancy Benoit. Uh, Jim, any final advice for some wrestlers who bring their wives into the business? What, would, what kind of advice would you, would, would you give them? Well, after what I experienced, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't bring my wife into the business of wrestling at this time. Um, like People used to ask me, how did you guys get in? And I said, well, it was like we were in the right place at the right time. But really, what I tell people now is we were probably in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that's where we ended up. Wow. that's uh... Jim, were you ever offered <laughs> any, any uh, um, chance, chance to return to wrestling after splitting with Nancy? Did you ever get a phone call from anybody like a Paul Heyman? Or have you ever even spoke to Vince McMahon somehow over the years? No, that was, when we were working together in – Florida and Texas and Georgia and all that. We were with the NWA, the, N the Championship Wrestling of Florida, and so forth like that. So Vince hadn't really started yet. you got to remember, we were doing this from 81 to mm -hmm. 85. Mm -hmm. so that was really before Vince. Gordon, Gordon Soli, Soli, baby. baby. So, you, so you, you, had, you, had, you, had your, you had your regular job. What was Nancy making 
in the beginning of a career as, you know, mm. as a valet? Mm. Not a lot. She didn't make a lot of money back then. Um, I, I was a contract worker at the gas company, reading gas meters, and Nancy didn't drive, so I, I'd read the meters really fast. We'd drive to the next next town, and she'd do her thing, and we'd drive all night to get home. So what was a typical payday for a show back then? Oh, 75 bucks. Now, at any point, did you want to be a wrestler? What's that? At any at point, any did you want to be a wrestler? Be a wrestler? Not really, no. I did my own thing with with Kevin and the group, and that was enough. All right. No cane shots for you again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did Nancy, Nancy start making big money at any point while you were married, or that all happened after she left? It just happened. She started doing really, really well just after we got divorced. That's what I was trying to tell her because we were not making any money doing this. It was a crazy life going all over the place, all the traveling and so forth, and we were not making any money doing this. And I said, Nancy, if you're going to make it as a wrestler in the wrestling business, you're going to probably have to do it without me. I, there's no room for this, for me in this. Right. Right. I have to start taking all these trips without me. And that's when we decided to let her live her dream and follow her career and go from there. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. All right, Jim, we want to thank you for coming on. And uh, we really appreciate the insight on Nancy's life and your life. And it's been a pleasure having you on, Jim. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And you all have a good night. Thank you, Thank sir. you sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All righty, then. What would you think, Farrell? Very insightful. He's a class act. That's what I think. Oh, you no know? doubt. And now I'm wondering. I'm like, you know, the, the one of the deepest things he said was, is, is I wonder... Maybe if I didn't encourage her to get into wrestling, maybe things would have been different. He sounds like a, exactly what she may have needed ultimately. I mean, I hate to go in that direction, but I mean, look at look at how it turned out, and you know, Oy. personally, I'm thinking to myself, it's, it's, like, it's so unfair wow, to second guess. Jealous, Who's like, going to know that this is what this man was going to do to Nancy? I mean, how's, how's no, but Jim the, supposed but to know? It's not even so, on the other point. It's oh like you know, she, she, you know, you. I know you. Yeah. I mean, if. You know, you had left or divorced your wife, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden found out the guy you were hanging out with now is her husband. Right. You right. know that's that's a, that's a tough act, yeah, too, right? That, yeah. He's had to digest a lot of shit. I mean, quite honestly, and he's done it with class. But with so a lot I, of class. I found him to be a very composed guest and very insightful and another excellent and another... positive stuff to say. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Maybe we can learn something from that. So let me you ask know. you before we end the show Maybe. tonight. You feel Nancy Benoit should be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, as far as what she did, sure. Why not? Why not? Now, don't ask me about Chris because you know what I think about No, I'm not going to. You know what? You know, you know how I, mean, I feel about Chris Yeah, Benoit, we know right? about Chris. I mean, and, and what's the most bizarre thing of all, and I'll say it till the day I pass, Chris Benoit would have been the last guy I would have picked in the locker room to do something like that. So you never know. You just never know. I mean, Chris Benoit was so quiet and so mellow and seemed so just not that. It's bad, bro. It's bad. Great guest, though, and an excellent addition to the Monty and the Pharaoh Library. Absolutely. Excellent. Bro. Absolutely. Excellent. I'm just, I'm always amazed how people, you know, they can love each other even after all they go through. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, four years right. and letting her go to right. go on to a dream. That's incredible. To and me. to run across and sit down at a plane and sit there and have a three hour conversation. So, so he let go of her. While others can't even let go of their peanut butter sandwich. It's just like, what is wrong with you? You're right. I mean, that is incredible what he did. He it is composed incredible. himself and moved on. You know? I mean, amazing man, quite honestly. That was awesome. All right, so we got about two minutes left. How do you feel about the new studio? Beautiful. It's lovely. We have that. We have Luke and the other zip code. That works for me. We got these big power lights. Is it hot in here? It's not even hot. We got all these power Luke, lights. how'd you like your first show with Monty and Afaro? I know we had a little bit of problems, but it takes time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. You didn't spill my whiskey, did you? We're not off the air yet. <laughs> I had a oh phenomenal time. Oh phenomenal time. God. We would work out all these kinks throughout the show, boys. Yeah, it just takes it just takes a little time, yeah, man. Well, you know. Right? Uh, I know you were busy producing, but did you have a chance to listen to what Jim had to say about Nancy at all? Oh, yeah, of course. That was a, that was a really great interview. It's just 
such a sad story, and it's really interesting just to hear a perspective from somebody who actually knows those kind of people. Because right. you can watch as many documentaries about something as you want, but you right. don't really know anybody unless you're talking to right. the actual person who knew them. Yep. That's why I waited. I'm going to watch it now. I wanted to talk to him. <laughs> right, now, now I'll watch, watch it. it. You see, you're pretty smart. <laughs> that's why you're the star of the show. Well, I want to get a fresh response off the cuff that's real, not just, you know, I sat there and watched the whole thing, and I've got it memorized. Right. And where's your suit and tie, by the way? <laughs> Yawn. You know, <laughs> let's do things our way. That's, that, that's, that's why we are Monty and the Pharaoh. You know, but, but this has been awesome. Awesome it, first experience. It was. A, it's been an awesome you know? first. And you know, experience. it's only going to get better. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. On, so. Again, uh, we, you know, we had some technical dis- difficulties, right? right? But yeah, but it's going to snow Saturday. We don't even know what's in the air. Exactly. Santa's got Corona. Exactly. That's true. What a mess. All right. Anyway, oh, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you uh, you helped out on that interview, boy, because uh, I, I was I was struggling a little bit. I got to <laughs> be you? honest with you a little bit. You think it's the beard? No. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I get. You know, I get yeah. when things. Yeah. Maybe the hairs are growing in and going up to the, the the medulla and the cerebellum. The hair does fall into my what? mouth, though. It does become does a problem. It? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Does, yeah, I don't know if Jolly Ranchers would be recommended right about now. <laughs> Jolly no, Ranchers. I don't think so. Anyway, Monty DeFaro can be seen on YouTube, <laughs> Facebook Live, on the Monty DeFaro page, yeah. iHeartRadio, yeah. Spotify, yeah. Anchor. Oh, yeah. Where else? And I feels a twitch. Give me some help. I feels a twitch. There's a twitch coming. Yeah, that's right. Twitch. So anyway, uh, and place. on cable television, channel 115 yeah. Yeah. from, uh, yeah. what is it, 8 to 8.30 uh, on yeah, Tuesdays? Uh, uh, 8.30 to 9 o'clock on Tuesdays. And then and, uh, 6.30, 630 to 7, 7 o'clock uh, in the morning on Saturdays you. with my Frosted Flakes. Anyway, yeah. I want to thank Luke for producing the show. Thank I you. want to thank uh, Indie Music TV for hosting and producing mm-hmm. this show. We'll be not back next week. I want to thank you for your return. Yeah, thank you. Do we do this now? Is yeah, this we got to do that. That's so lame anyway. Again, I want to thank all the frontline workers yes. and uh, uh, my prayers are for all the families that have uh, going through the pain that they're going through right now. Absolutely. And I want to thank Mr. Jim Doss for taking his time yes. to come on this show and, like you said, yep. adding to a library. And, uh, and he doesn't speak often, so nice job there, Mikey. Well. Nice job. And again, I, I got to tell you, I think I learned something from Mr. Doss. Yep. Right? Yep. How a real human being should act. Yes. So again, thank yes. you, Jim, while well, you're out there. All right, we'll catch you next week, 9.05, Thursday, Indie Music Television. Luke, thank you. Jimmy Farrell, thank you. Later. Later.